Hello everyone once again. Uh, we are back with uh, another problem. This time we will slightly change the topic which is long shunt uh, DC generator. So let's jump right into the problem and then see what, uh, how it goes. Hopefully again as I have been saying by solving these problems you understand some concepts. So let's look at our problem today. A long shunt dynamo running. So first of all what is this dynamo? Dynamo is nothing but a DC generator. So a long shunt DC generator. What is long shunt? Now this is a compound gen uh, DC generator. There are different types of DC generators and one of the type is long shunt. I will just quickly draw the figure uh, or the circuit diagram of a long shunt DC generator. So let me solve it now. So the, the drawing is like this long shunt that means the shunt winding uh, is in parallel with the series winding armature. So this is how the, the DC generator looks like. The input is mechanical and the output is electrical. So this is a generator, this is the field winding, let's call it RSH, resistance of the shunt field winding. RSE resistance of the series field winding, RA resistance of the armature. Remember, the armature resistance is inside this, but just for ease of uh, representation as a circuit, it is drawn outside. These are the brushes. This is the uh, generator. It will have a prime mover. So let me just show the prime mover here. This is mechanical prime mover. Now. Uh, I hope uh, the diagram is, uh, it is clearly visible to you. Let's continue. The long shunt DC generator dynamo running at 1000 RPM supplies 20 kilowatt at terminal voltage of 220 volts. So let me put down this information also in my problem. So uh, there is a load and this load is 20 kilowatts load. And the terminal voltage plus minus is 220 volts. So that means this point and this point, the voltage is difference is 220 volts. So right away from this I can calculate the current, but then we'll come back to it. Let's write some more information that is provided in the question. The resistance of the armature, shunt field and series field are so and so. So let me write that armature resistance is 0 0.04 ohms, shunt field resistance is 110 ohms and the series field resistance is 0 0.05 ohms. So I have used this information. Overall efficiency in the above load is 85%. So this overall efficiency is the output by input. So I think we can calculate that input directly from this. All right, so what needs to be found? So what is the copper loss? What is the iron and friction loss? And then what is the torque developed by the prime mover? All right, so one more information that is given that is the speed is 1000 RPM. So let me write it down here. So N is equal to 1000 RPM. So this is what the information, so as always I say, Whenever you see a problem like this, it helps to draw a circuit and then represent all your information that is provided here. All right. Now, how do you find the copper loss? Copper loss is the loss in the windings. It's a loss because of the I square R. So you need to find what is the currents in each part of the circuit, which is very easy. See, the load is 20 kilowatts and the voltage is 220 volts. So I can find the load current. So what is load current? is nothing but load power divided by load voltage. So 20 kilowatts, so I am writing 20,000 watts divided by uh, 220 volts, which gives me a load current. Let me calculate right away in front of you. So 20,000 divided by 220. So I get 90.91 amperes. I just rounded it off. Now, with this current, I'll, I'll mark the current here, 90.91 amperes. Now, what is the current in the field? 
So since the voltage is 220 volts at the terminal, the same terminal is connected to the shunt field winding also. So I can find out the field current ISH is nothing but VL divided by RSH, which is nothing but 220 volts divided by 110 ohms, which I get 2 amperes. So, by simple Kirchhoff's current law, you can look at this diagram. 90.91 amperes is going right, 22 amperes going left. So obviously the current here, the armature current IA, uh, will be nothing but IL plus ISH, uh, which is nothing but 90.91 plus 2, which is 92.91. Now, copper loss. So it's very easy to find copper loss. Uh, because I know all the currents in the circuit. So copper loss is nothing but ISH square RSH plus IA square RA plus RSC. So this is uh, the copper loss in the shunt field winding. Shunt copper loss. And then this is the copper loss in the armature and series winding. Because it's a long shunt machine, the series uh, armature and the series winding are connected and the same current IA flows to both of them so I could write this expression. So we know everything in this so let's calculate. The shunt current is 2 amperes, 2 square multiplied by RSH is 110 ohms plus 92.91 square multiplied by RA. Uh, RA is given in the question that is 0 0.04 plus 0 0.05 so this is very easy 4 into 110 this is 440 plus uh, this is 92.91 square into 0 0.09 so let me use my calculator now so 92.91 into 92.91 into 0 0.009 or 0 0.09 so that one is 776.9 so plus 440 plus 440 so I get 1217 I'll just round it off oh sorry this is watts so this is copper loss this is the first answer so let me write down here uh, the answer is 1217 watts Next question that is being asked is what is iron and friction loss? Now, how do you find iron and friction loss? So, to find iron and friction loss, we, it helps to draw another diagram uh, which uh, shows a map of all the things that is happening in the generator or the power flows. So, let me give that diagram to you. So, what happens in a generator, DC generator? is that the input power is mechanical. So PM is the input power. Whatever is a mechanical power that is input, there is some losses going on in that. So that losses are due to friction and uh, due to iron losses. So remember the armature of the DC generator is rotating in a magnetic field and whenever the armature core is in a magnetic field and it is rotating, there will be some iron losses in the core that is that is represented here. So if I take out this, whatever I get is denoted as PG which is nothing but EG into IA. So where EG is the EMF generated and IA is the armature uh, current. From that, uh, we subtract the losses that is the copper losses. So this is copper losses. So when you subtract the copper losses, then whatever is the remaining that comes as the P out. So let me write it PL because that's the power going to the load. Now uh, let's, once this diagram you understand the mechanical input, some mechanical losses are there, then we have the electrical power developed and that electrical power developed, some electrical losses are there and then the output is there. This output is electrical. Now let's get back to our problem. 
and then write down what information you already have. Uh, you see the load output is 20 kilowatts, it's given here, so I write that 20 kilowatts as my output. Now, it's also given in the question that the overall efficiency is 85%. So what is efficiency? Efficiency is output divided by input. So I have 85% is equal to output is 20,000 watts divided by input, which is unknown right now. So I could always find what is the input. I can find input power, or I use this notation PM, which is 20,000 divided by 0 0.85. So how much is that? So let me bring in the calculator. 20,000 divided by 0.85. I get 23,529 watts. So let me put that figure here, 23,529 watts. So of course, this power is mechanical whereas this power is electrical. So there is a conversion going on and during that conversion there is this losses. And by the way, what are the copper losses? We just calculated the copper losses which is, if I go back to my previous answer, 1217 watts. So that copper loss, I will write it here, 1217 watts. Now, the input and the output is known and one of the losses is known. So what are the other losses? So the other losses is simply the total losses. So total losses is nothing but input minus output minus 20,000. So I get 3529 watts. Now, uh, but what is the total loss? So this is total loss. So copper loss. Uh, copper loss is 1217. Watts. So the other loss, if I subtract this, is just like accounting. It will be 2312 watts. This is nothing but friction and iron losses. So this is our second answer. So let me go back and make a note of it. Friction and iron losses is 2312 watts. This is the first answer. This is the second answer. Another question that is being asked is torque developed by the prime mover. All right, so torque developed by the prime mover. This is another concept. So you you see here the prime mover input power is 23,529. So P prime mover is nothing but torque developed for torque of the prime mover, mechanical torque multiplied by the omega. What is this omega? Omega is the radial is the angular velocity uh, of the rotor. Alright, how do we get angular velocity? We know the speed. The speed is 1000 revolutions per minute. That is given in the question. Somewhere it is mentioned. Yeah, it's in the first line, 1000 revolutions per minute. So when the speed is 1000 revolutions per minute, I can divide by 60 uh, I will say revolutions per second. Now, in one revolution there will be 2 pi radians. So therefore, if I multiply by 2 pi, 1060, uh, the unit now becomes omega. That is radians per second. Earlier it was revolutions per second, now it becomes radians per second with this unit of omega. Now, this is omega. Uh, what about Pm, I know, therefore Tm, I can directly find out Pm divided by omega, which is nothing but mechanical input 23529 divided by omega. So 2 pi into 1000, and the 60 which is in the denominator now goes to the numerator. So this is the calculation we need to do. So let's quickly uh, do that. So I 23529 multiplied by 60 divided by 2 again divided by pi 3.14159 divided by 1000. So I am getting a value 
seven newton meters. This is a unit of mechanical torque. So this is my third and final answer. So this is 224.7 newton meters. So this is uh, a problem about a long shunt uh, generator. So how we approach it, we draw the circuit diagram, we mark all the values that are given to you and then in order to find the copper losses we found the currents first this is simple uh, this part is just uh, solving circuits solving circuits problem so if you are good at uh, of voltage loss and ohms law and all you can do this calculation once you do this simply calculating of power and then uh, this figure really helps what happens in a DC generator input is mechanical output is electrical in between there is a power dollar. You can also calculate what is EG, what is IA because the information is given to you or you, if you want you can calculate EG and IA but right now uh, in the best interest of time I am not doing that. With this I will end this uh, problem. If you have any doubts please leave the question whatever your doubts or questions in the comments I will try to answer them. Thank you.